Once, there was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. From that kingdom came a crowned heir. Let the magic begin! Let the magic begin!
first time we came here. Oh, Paimon remembers! Nahida's consciousness had been trapped by the doctor, but we followed the clues she left behind to help her. So much time has already passed since then. And it seems Sumeru is changing for the better now that Nahida's in charge, right? Paimon just hopes this peace will last a long time. And then Nahida won't have any more new problems to deal with. Yeah, guess you're right. Hmm. But somehow we'll always find ourselves right in the thick of it. Who knows what will happen next? Come to think of it, maybe it's all because of you. Maybe you're just a magnet for trouble. She was super tired. Paimon got caught in some strange whirlpool and sucked out into sea. And even then, you fished Paimon out. <sighs> anyway, for Nahida's sake, maybe we should think about heading to our next destination for now. Ah, look who it is. Running into you in a place like this? I can see you two still love wandering around. to do with our journey. But never mind that. What brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. Nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there. Chatting away. What were you two talking about anyway? Huh? Y you serious? Can't say I saw that coming. Hmm, but you are travelers after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey, how about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry, we'll come back to see everyone when we get a chance. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? dishes in Sumeru that Paimon hasn't tried yet. Now, where's that list Paimon made? Hmm. I see. Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> by the way, should we go say bye to Nahida? Oh, good point. Then there's no need to bother her in the real world. Then, I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. Goodbye, Dia. Bye-bye, Sumeru.
all that sand and water, we finally made it! Oh, this must be Fontaine's port! Wow! Everything looks so... advanced in Fontaine! Paimon's heard that the industry here is extremely developed, and there are all kinds of unusual machines! The sights as a tourist is nice, but maybe it would be better if we found something to do! What do you think? Good idea! Nahida gave us loads of useful information. Seeking out the seven is probably still our best source for information at this point. Yeah! The more we can learn, the better! So, what do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Nahira said that she has a very unique personality. Whatever that means. To learn about a nation's god, start with the nation's people. There seems to be some locals talking over there. Let's go see if we can join the party! If you ask me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you too? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. Uh, hi! <laughs> We're travelers new to Fontaine, and we had something we wanted to ask, but you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> A play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like, a real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. Well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is splendid enough. Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. You probably don't know that the Fontaine Court of Justice is called the Opera Epicles, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. But, uh, shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously? Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things. It's just that putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. You could say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellet. As well as the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. Between the machine and the Chief Justice, false charges and injustice are a thing of the past now. The Oratrice? Is it some kind of machine too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance! Wait, I might almost forgot to ask you our question. Um, do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Oh, that's easy. Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. Huh. I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. 
In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots available. Huh. Is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? Wait, did you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time to time, people can't get enough of her. First time Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. <gasps> Wait! Paimon gets it now! The Hydro Archon is kinda like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellet. <laughs> Come on. Sure, there's a lot of laws here. But nobody's going to be arrested for saying something disrespectful about the Hydro Archon. Alright! I think we get it! Thank you! At least we now know that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. But who knows how long making an appointment will take? <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. What are you looking over there for? Huh. Maybe something's the matter. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? Uh, maybe we better go check on her. How about we get some tickets to the next trial? Hmm... I think we'd better wait and see what kind of case it is first. Fine. Thanks. Oh, okay then. We just noticed that you seem to be worried about something. About many things, actually. But there's nothing I can do but just keep my troubles to myself. I was just reminiscing about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? You're pointing at the sea. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that you and your brother lived in the water? No people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now, it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly, and the air was filled with the scent of the sea.
But now, the water is gradually swallowing our memories. <sighs> it won't be long before it swallows us. Get what you mean. Ah, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friends? Oh, and you are? Thanks for looking after my sister. She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood, that's all. There's no need for any concern. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister, Lynette. If I had to guess, I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is a traveler! We just arrived in Fontaine! We were just talking with your sister! Uh, even though we didn't really get what she was saying. Hmm, I see. It's unusual for Lynette to be so willing to talk with anyone. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us! Paimon's always the one talking for some reason. <laughs> so that's how you think it is? I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. Oh. <laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. <laughs> so, what did Lynette mean just now when she said that the water is engulfing your memories? And that it won't be long before it engulfs you too? Oh, that. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of uncertainty. There's no doubt about what's happening in Fontaine now. Where to begin? Hmm... Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Uh, did all the introductions earlier not count? Hello, Traveler. And hello, Paimon. Hey! Why didn't Paimon get a handshake? Oh. You're not poking fun at Paimon, are you? <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. So you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Please follow me.
You said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. cup in hand and those with nothing at all. Raise your glasses in celebration! If you don't have one, then just raise your hand in lieu. As you can all see, two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation. Come, let us make a toast in honor of this traveler and his companion who have journeyed here from distant lands. left in your wake as you visited other nations. But I welcome you nevertheless. No, I have come to receive you personally. Fear is for insignificant cowards. I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion of such meaningless wariness. You can be rest assured. I see clearly your sincerity. Of course, seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> correct banner. I, Fosalor, Hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Yeah, Hyman still can't believe it. Feels like we've only been here for a few minutes. Uh, how should Paimon describe it? A little over the top? Ahem. <clears throat> um, Miss Hydro Icon? How did you know we were coming? Ah, I see. As Outlanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic understanding. Don't forget that even the gods can be divided into the mediocre and the excellent. I suppose it's only natural for you to be awestruck by my abilities. You had best stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? All it takes is a flick of my finger for me to know everything about you. Oh, talk about sounding high and mighty. <laughs> oh, what's with these looks? Perhaps the welcoming ceremony still isn't enough? Hmm, what else should I say then? Uh, is she waiting for us to start talking? Wow, 
I didn't expect to see Lady Farina here. What a surprise! Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? How did I not notice before? Hey, what's all the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course! That's the blonde traveler! The one all those stories are about! Lady Farina came here to personally see him. Oh, I bet this is going to be the duel of the century. Oh, I've got to see this! I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint! <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now! My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all their ruckus. You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another land, just as you were hoping to see. She wants to fight? Are we getting a little ahead of ourselves? that this is a duel against the divine. What are you trying to do, Traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? <clears throat> Stand down, Clorend. I admire his bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. He is obviously a true warrior. Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled, and a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement! Oh, yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that interesting. <sighs> On Araneus, criminals are always requesting duels to defend their honor. They're getting a bit old, to tell the truth. You see... As the god of justice, I shall face this traveler in another kind of duel. A duel in court! Whoa, all right! Now that'll be worth seeing! Right, this is Fontaine, after all. It's such a grand opera house, it would be a pity not to use it. Too much time in the Opera House. Besides, how exactly do you plan to have a duel in court? You mean you're going to put us on trial? <laughs> oh, we have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, isn't it? According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Oh, so that's what they've done wrong. Mm, that's our Lady Farina. No one knows the laws of Fontaine like she does. Now, 
Now, if you two have no objections, then in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest. My apologies, Lady Farina. I don't mean to spoil the fun, but if you would allow me to interject, I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. You tell her, Linny! Finally, someone who's not crazy! How could anyone call Paimon a flying object? Ah, great magician, Linny. My beloved citizen. I'll permit you to object. But how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? <laughs> As a magician who just rained on your parade, I naturally should shoulder the responsibility of saving the show. So, with such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. As you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. This rope has been in the Traveler's hand all along. It was just that no one could see it before. <laughs> you call that magic? You've got to be joking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Nice one. Huh. I'm not sure what to think. It seems Lady Farina's charges no longer hold water. <laughs> amusing. Very amusing, Lenny. Just the sort of unexpected twist that I enjoy. With you here, today's performance can finally be called complete. Performance? You see all this as a performance? In which case, consider the matter of your trial resolved. The God of Justice will not bring charges against an innocent person. But when there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your upcoming performance at the Opera House, Mr. Linny and Miss Lynette. That's enough for now. Toodaloo! Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, so I did a little preparation, just in case. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. So, now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina is? She can be a bit confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. Linny. It's 
sounded like you'll be performing at the Opera House, right? <laughs> I just know a few simple tricks I use to make a living. Lynette is my assistant. It will actually be my first time performing on the most prestigious stage in Fontaine. The Opera House. But isn't the Opera House where criminal trials are held in Fontaine? When there are no public trials being held, the Opera House hosts a variety of other performances. To the people of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can be a little blurred. And speaking of performances, I would be remiss to forego this opportunity gifted by fate. Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? My brother's always excited to make new friends. Oh, sure! We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway! Splendid. In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of first. Oh, you really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. About that... Hmm. You asked me before about the prophecy, right? Let me start by telling you a little more about what it entails. I'm not sure exactly when it began, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. That sounds pretty gloomy. Why are people in Fontaine born with sin? What is that supposed to mean? There are lots of guesses. Some say that the ancestors of Fontaine stole the power of the seas and stirred its wrath. Others say that the people of Fontaine never heeded the first Hydro Archon's warnings and offended Celestia. But here in Fontaine, evidence is what matters. There hasn't been concrete evidence for any of these claims, so they can only be regarded as conjecture. If even the people in Fontaine don't know what sin they committed, wouldn't it be better just to ignore the prophecy completely? Why bother feeling guilty all the time? That's exactly what the people did at first. But... In the last few years, the water levels in Fontaine have actually started rising. Hmm. Many places have already been completely submerged, and now lie beneath the sea. Many people carry on with their lives as before and shrug it off as a natural phenomenon. But my family and I think that the people of Fontaine shouldn't ignore the possibility, which would end up sentencing them to death. We hope that at least the people who reside near the waterfront can move away before it's too late. So, we've started distributing magic pockets to them. As a magical item, these magic pockets have astonishing capacity. I'm sure they will come in handy when people are moving their belongings. Oh, Hyman gets it! It's like preparing for a rainy day! But this is more than a bit of rain. Hmm. 
Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> but who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you'd like to help, then please give these magic pockets to anyone nearby. Be sure to convince them to take it, regardless of what they say. So you're the blonde traveler that everyone's been talking about. My apologies for not recognizing you earlier. Oh, a magic pocket? Seems you really thought of everything. I guess it's better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Thanks. Oh, please, also thank the magician on my behalf when you get the chance. But where would I move to? Snezhnaya? Liue? What's this? Ah, so you also believe in the prophecy. <laughs> Keep it. I won't have any use for it. What? You mean you don't believe in the prophecy? No, no, I believe in the prophecy. But I also believe in another story. The story says that people once lived in the ocean. They were one with the ocean and couldn't live apart from it. But as time wore on, people desired to live on land and developed blood vessels, encapsulating the sea within their bodies. Thus could people set foot on land. So, if you ask me, when the water rises and takes us all, it'll be like we're going home. Oh, we hadn't heard that one before. But people can't live underwater. They'll die. You should probably still take it. <sighs> all right, I'll take it. I guess I just feel that being dissolved into the water doesn't necessarily mean death. What do you think? Pretty interesting story, huh? I don't want that thing. The way I see it, if the prophecy's true, it's still gonna be a long time before the water can cover everything. Life is all about living in the moment. What use is there in worrying about the future all the time? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You should still take it. You never know when it'll come in handy. Oh, all right, fine. Thanks. It's just that if I start moving, that means I've already given up on the life I have now. I'd really rather not. Huh? 
I really can't imagine what it would be like if things changed. You already handed out all of the magic pockets? Hmm. That was fast. So, what did people have to say? I bet you heard some... Uh, interesting opinions. Yes, but that will change once disaster strikes. I know they'll change their minds, so it's only right to help them prepare. Yes, one last thing. I have the magic pockets made by a workshop in the Court of Fontaine. Since we're out and about, I was thinking about bringing him some more materials. So, you want to collect materials? Just tell us what the materials look like and we'll help! Many hands make light work. Oh, that would be much appreciated. We'll need some Romaritime flowers. I remember seeing them near the waterfront on the east side of the harbor.
do this! You made quick work of that. I can tell you're an experienced traveler. I've also finished collecting a few here. Maybe next time you'll feel like helping too, Lynette. No way. I'm in power saving mode today. Otherwise, I fear I may not have any energy left for the performance at the Opera House. <sighs> Fine. Though the performance is still a long way off. Now that we're finished here, we should get ready to head back to the Court of Fontaine. So, we're going to the Court of Fontaine before we head to the Opera House? Good. Paimon wants a tour of Fontaine's largest city and try... Wait, shh. Have you noticed that person over there? The young girl. Huh? What's wrong with her? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Watch her movements carefully. Voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. You two can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. All right, let's go.
for a while now. Hyma wonders if Lenny caught the thief. Yeah, let's go. Are you sure that's all she took? You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. N no, that was all. 
Oh, I can't thank you enough. I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Oh, were you returning with the thief had stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. I saw the general direction she went, but Linny twisted his ankle, and I needed to make sure he was okay. Oh, did you get hurt, Linny? I'll be all right. It's just a twisted ankle, that's all. In fact, it's feeling better already. If you want to play at being a hero, at least try not to get hurt doing it. Imagine what would happen if you managed to derail our performance as a result. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Sorry, Lynette. <sighs> I have to admit that the thief was even more skilled than I had anticipated. But at least we were able to get the stolen items back, so it wasn't a complete failure. In the end, though, Lenny's initiative paid off! All right, let's put this little detour behind us. We should go to the Court of Fontaine now. This is an Aquabus. It allows people to travel between several key locations around Fontaine. It's pretty convenient, but the ride can become a little dull after a while. The scenery is always the same. That's why it's better to travel with friends. So you mean it's still boring even when I'm riding with you? Uh, no, that's not what I meant. It's just that, uh... Well, you don't really talk that much. Besides, it doesn't really feel like a real trip when it's just the two of us. It's the same as being at home. <laughs> hmm. Whatever. Guess that's what it's like to be an older brother. <laughs> it's about time for us to leave. Let's get on board. riding the Aquabus? In the story of my life, this is big news! What are you doing in Fontaine? I didn't hear anything about you paying us a visit. Yeah, it's quite the coincidence, but as travelers, we're always on the move. It's not surprising that nobody knew we were coming. Uh, though, we still have no idea 
idea how the Hydro Archon knew about us. Oh! Let Paimon introduce you to our new friends! Oh, no need for introductions, Paimon. I would recognize the great magician Linny and his assistant Lynette anywhere. I wouldn't be much of a reporter if I didn't know who they were. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steambird. Nice to meet you. From the Steambird, huh? We've often relied on your paper to promote our performances. It's an honor to meet you. Ah, now that everyone knows each other, Fontaine suddenly doesn't feel like such an unfamiliar place. So, what have you been up to lately, Charlotte? Any big news? Not too much. When there isn't any breaking news, I mainly cover the trials at the Opera House. You can still manage to keep readers' attention as long as you tell things from a clever enough angle, even if it's the same old topics. For example, reporting on how a scammer once deceived vulnerable girls into relationships, or how a financial criminal was once so poor that they ate a single piece of bread for five days. You're right. Seems you know me pretty well. What I'm really after is exclusive, sensational news pieces that could shake the country. These smaller stories are a waste of my talents. Oh, I just remembered. I've been following a case lately. Well, a series of cases, actually. You mean the serial disappearances of young women case? That's right! These stories are the talk of the town right now, and it's probably the most mysterious case we've ever seen. If I'm the first with a draft ready to publish when the case is finally cracked, and it's the headline story in the Steambird! Oh! When that happens, I bet all the other reporters will shed tears of envy. I've already gathered all kinds of materials. I just can't wait for the truth to be revealed! So, what is Serial disappearances of young women case. You mean the culprit hasn't been found? That's right. The first missing girl case happened almost 20 years ago. And ever since, after a period of time, another girl disappears. What the cases have in common is that the girls are all of a similar age, and that they've all vanished without a trace. But the scariest part is that to this day, None of the girls have ever been found. Many suspects have been arrested over the years in connection with this case, but shortly after each arrest, another disappearance would always happen. Yes, it's possible. But either way, I believe that every case has some precise truth behind it, waiting to be exposed. Yes, I agree. And at the very least, the family of those missing girls deserves some sort of explanation. <laughs> I just imagined for a second what I would do if Lynette were to suddenly disappear. I'd pay any price to get her back, and then find a way to track down the culprit. Please don't imagine that, Lenny.
Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you. Life should be full of pleasant little surprises like this. Yeah, us as well. The ride went by too quickly. Ah, I have an interview to get to. I should get going before I'm late. Okay, Paimon hopes we can chat again soon, Charlotte. See ya! <laughs> Bye now. Oh, be sure to stop by and see me at the Steambird when you have time. What a tough job. Always running around and interviewing everyone. <sighs> well, where should we go now? If you don't mind, how about we stop by my home first? Besides, I still have all the materials we collected. Sure, we wouldn't mind at all. This city is so huge, Paimon wouldn't know where to start anyway. About the future. Take a guess. I'll take a guess. No way. I'm not guessing. This is our current abode. Remine, you're home. Where did everyone else go? I have some new friends that I would like to introduce. Oh, they all just went out a moment ago. I see. Everyone is getting busier now that Father will be returning soon. I suppose that can't be helped. Allow me to introduce you to my little brother, Fremine. He is a phenomenal diver. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! Oh, you sound very proud to have a diver as a brother, Linny. <laughs> uh, Linny? Could you come here for a moment? Hmm? What is it, Fremenet? Do you have something to tell me? Hmm. Okay, I see. Everything all right? Oh, 
oh, it's nothing. We were just discussing a little housework. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, uh, before I forget, the Traveler and I collected more materials to make magic pockets. Were you able to get any, Fremine? Yes, I went diving and gathered lots of materials. I was about to give them to you. That's our Fremine, always quick with the underwater work. All right, I'll take these to the workshop. Looks like rain. Oh, you're right! But wasn't it clear and sunny just a moment ago? Hmm. Fontaine's weather sure is weird. <laughs> I'm afraid that's just how it is here. It often rains on days where there are trials being held in the Opera House, but don't worry, it'll clear up soon enough. There's a legend about the rain that I tend to believe. It's said that a dragon of water once resided in Fontaine. Though we don't know where the dragon went, every time it weeps, the skies will cloud up and pour out rain. When I was a child, my mother told me that if I wanted to go outside and play, I should yell toward the sky at the top of my lungs. Hydro Dragon! Hydro Dragon! Don't cry! If it's an elemental dragon, then having the power to make it rain wouldn't be very unusual. Hmm. Let Paimon try something. Doesn't seem to be of any use. It is just a legend, after all. You know, you might be a more popular magician if you understood the concept of romanticism. Or could at least play along. <laughs> Sorry. It might be because we've never met the Hydro Dragon. Perhaps it can't be comforted by the words of strangers. It rained for longer than I suspected. Oh, it's already getting late. Was there something you needed to do, Lenny? Yeah, some preparations for the show at the Opera House. I need to find a way to catch the last Aquabus of the day. On the day of the performance, just ride the Aquabus to the island of Araneus. I'll have Lynette meet you at the fountain in front of the Opera House. Oh, uh, are you leaving now? What is it, Fremine? I'm in a hurry. Oh, I get it. You feel nervous delivering the materials for the magic pockets, is that it? Perhaps we could trouble the Traveler to help us take these materials to the Beaumont workshop and deliver them to the owner there? I'm afraid that Fremine can be quite introverted. And the boss there tends to be pretty talkative. <laughs> Fremine has always been a little afraid of her. No trouble at all! Don't worry, we're on the case! Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm quite useless when it comes to such tasks. 
I'll think of a way to make it up to you. Thanks again, you two. I really can't deal with that lady. Keep this close. Hello there. New customers? Looking to buy, or do you need something made? Or perhaps you're just looking for a chat with me. Oh no, we're just here to deliver some materials. Here they are. They're for making... Uh... What were they called again? Ah, these must be for magic pockets. I could tell right away. I've already made several orders worth now. No, no need. They've already prepaid several batches worth. When they told me what they'd be using them for, I even offered them a discount. But they insisted on paying the full amount, saying that I had a business to run. <laughs> it seems both their hearts and their pockets are made of gold. Wow. So, is Lenny actually loaded? Mm, I can't say for sure. But who knows? Maybe there's good money to be made being a magician in Fontaine. Hey! Is this machine what you use to make stuff here? It looks really advanced! Why use your hands when a machine can do the work? It would be a waste not to use the latest technology. And wasting is a kind of crime. Ah, uh, well, it's a little complicated. I'm not sure I can put it in layman's terms for you. But basically, everything we usually use here in the city is powered by indemnidium. It's a type of energy that's produced from trials. completely sure of all the details myself, but basically... When a trial is in session, the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinale harvests people's belief in justice and converts it into energy to be used all around Fontaine.
So that's what its other function is? Hmm. Paimon heard that the Oratrice was created by the Archon to make judgments. But... Uh, Paimon still doesn't get it. How could something unreliable like people's beliefs be turned into a stable power source for these machines? Oh, yeah! So that means the Hydro Archon relies on the machine to take the energy created by belief and turn it into power for all of Fontaine, right? Even though I've never heard anyone really put it that way before, it sounds like it makes sense. Besides Indemnidium, we have another type of energy called Numusia. It isn't produced by the power of the Archon, but it is unstable by nature. Even now, it still cannot be widely used by civilians. I thought I'd find you hard at work, but here you are chatting the day away. Since you're already talking, I'm sure you wouldn't mind a few words with me. Y you again? Didn't I already promise you that I'd have the more I owe to Conferry of Cabriere by next month? Why are you hounding me now? Yeah, but how do we know that you won't go running off by the end of this month? I want 50% today. Wait, no, 70%. Huh? You... Seems business isn't so great for the workshop. We've already finished our job and delivered the materials. Maybe now's a good time to leave? Hey, hold on! Before you go around trying to collect payments, why don't you settle your own debts first? If Confrere of Cabriere wants to poach clients from Northland Bank, that's fine. But I'm afraid you still owe the bank a hefty sum of more. So why don't we work things out between us first, before you get back to your little conversation here? Ah! Uh. You're from Northland Bank. But we said we'll pay everything we owe next month. Why are you hounding me now? Uh, Traveler, Paimon! I didn't think I'd run into you here in Fontaine. What are the chances? We're surprised to see you too! What are you doing here in Fontaine? You didn't want to stay in Stejnaya? <laughs> Long story short, 
I've already been in Fontaine for some time now, and honestly, things have been pretty boring. But it seems that fate brought our paths together today. Not only will I have some good friends here now, but ones who always seem to find trouble. Either way you look at it, it seems things are going to get a lot more interesting now. Pretty sure we'd want to avoid anything that you'd find interesting. Besides, our trip here has gone pretty well so far, right Trevor? Uh, hey, you, Northland Bank boy. Aren't you forgetting something? Don't interrupt. It's not often I run into the Traveler like this. Why don't you wait for me over there for a while? Uh, you kidding? Aren't you the one looking for us? You really expect us to sit and twiddle our thumbs while you catch up with your friends? Listen to me, boy. If you want your Mora, fine. Why don't you come and take it? Hey, I just said not to interrupt. Oh, by the way, Traveler, the last time I took Tonya and Tuser ice fishing, Tuser said... Hey! That's way over the line! All right, boys, let's see who has to pay up now! Uh, can you at least let me finish one sentence? Fine. Though the bank told me not to get rough with our clients. You're the ones who started it. This is an act of self-defense. <laughs> you two will have to be my witnesses, okay? I'm sure this won't take long. Shouldn't let your guard down. Snezhnaya's Northland Bank! Wait, don't tell me you're... <laughs> oh, now you notice. It's a little late, don't you think? Just make sure you understand that you don't mess with Northland Bank. Got it? Uh, huh? Now's my chance! Huh. That was weird. I'm not sure. It's as if I suddenly lost control of my hydro powers when I needed them. Maybe there's something wrong with my vision? Strange. How could that happen? First time Paimon's ever heard of someone losing control of their vision. Never mind. It doesn't matter. If I want to stay sharp, I shouldn't be relying too much on my vision anyway. Besides, I always have my delusion in case I need it. So what are you doing in Fontaine, child? I don't see its work for Northland Bank. Well, I guess it's because I've been in a bad mood lately. Huh? What kind of reason is that? Wait, since when do you feel down about anything? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I still have a lot to learn about myself. But recently, there seems to be some sort of restless power stirring inside of me. 
and I don't know why, but every now and then I feel like I'm in a terrible mood. vision just now is connected with that power you're feeling inside. Hmm. That is a possibility. I can't remember if I ever mentioned it before, but when I was 14, I fell into some unknown abyss. It was during that time I learned nearly all of my abilities. The one who took me under her wing and taught me was named Skirk. She was always quiet and very mysterious. Nobody knew where she came from or what she had been through, and she was always very strict when teaching me combat techniques. One time, I asked her why she was willing to take me on as an apprentice. From what I could make of her answer, it was... because I had awakened it and traces of it remained on me. She said that all my combat training would be useful in the future. But what is it? What did you awaken? She never explained that, but my guess is that it's related to a dream I saw when I had just fallen into that abyss. In my dream, I was in the deepest depths of the sea and the boundless seabed was all around me. But in front of me appeared a whale that was so massive, I felt like I couldn't breathe. A whale? Oh, that sounds familiar! When we fought against you before, you summoned a huge whale that seemed to leap at us. Is that the one? <laughs> That's just an abstract form of a whale that I create using my elemental powers. It takes that shape because the scene I dreamt of the whale has always been stuck in my mind. I'll never forget it. So you used the whale as inspiration for one of your moves? Huh. Seems a little twisted to Paimon. So why don't you just go ask your master? Maybe she knows the answer. You make it sound so easy. Ever since the incident I experienced there, I've never stopped searching for Master Skirk and that unknown abyss. But it's been years now, and I've still found nothing. There isn't even a trace of the place where I remember falling into the abyss. Oh, it sounds like some kind of ghost story. Yeah, I'm out of leads at this point, but there's nothing more I can do. It seems that strange encounters in this world tend to be elusive like that. Oh, seems the time really flies when I'm talking with you. I just remembered I have somewhere else I need to be, so I should get going. What? More work for the Northland Bank? And no, it's more of a personal appointment. Lately, I've been sparring with some of Fontaine's official champion duelists whenever I'm feeling bored. Official champion duelists? You mean it's their job to duel? Yep. In Fontaine, before a criminal goes to court, they're given one chance to defend their honor by requesting a duel with an official champion duelist. The champion duelists are all powerful fighters selected from among the nation's best. And the duel itself is a no-holds-barred fight with no specified stopping point. So engaging in such a duel is regarded as a symbol of defending your honor. If a criminal manages to win the duel, they'll be acquitted. But if they lose, they'll have no choice but to stand trial. And the worst case scenario is that you're simply killed in the duel. Though it's rumored that Fontaine has a death penalty, from what I can tell, no one has ever been officially sentenced to death.
So really, the only people who opt to duel are those who have suffered a grave injustice in being accused, or those who greatly value their honor. Otherwise, why gamble with your life? So, do many people actually get out of their trials by winning the duel? Apparently, it's exceedingly rare for anyone to actually win. Fontaine probably enacted this system as a way to show that the nation respects the honor of its citizens. Besides, none of the champion duelists are to be trifled with, which is exactly why I was itching to face them as soon as I got to Fontaine. Apparently, the one I'm meeting today, Clorend, is the strongest of the champion duelists. I had been asking her for some time before she finally agreed to face me today. Well, that's child for ya! Hmm. Paimon feels like we heard that name somewhere before. Clorend. Huh. Oh, before I forget, I want you to have this. I'm just worried that it could become uncontrollable again. I'd be pretty upset if it got in the way of my duel, so I think I'll be better off without it for now. Besides, I just need you to hold on to it for a short while. I'll come retrieve it when I have some time later. Hyman knows what you're up to. Want an excuse to come talk to us again, don't you? <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? I'll be in touch later. <laughs> that sneaky guy. He said he's been feeling down lately, but he seemed the same as ever to Paimon. Well, seems we don't have much to do for now. We might as well walk around and see the city before Lenny's performance. Wow! Who could have seen that coming? The reporter who was barely around for most of the story was the murderer all along! Coming. The murder mystery novels here are amazing! The whodunits here in Fontaine are a lot different than the light novels you see from Yai Publishing House. Both have their merits, but my mind thinks this style of novels are more... well, novel. It's so exciting to reach the moment when the mystery is uncovered, especially in the one Paimon was just reading. You should buy a copy and read it, too. Oh, sorry about that. Paimon will be more careful next time. Uh, hey, shouldn't we be heading to the Opera House to see Linny's performance soon? It's almost time for the show to start, so we should get going. Lenny said that the Opera House is on Arrhenius, so let's go ride the Aquabus!